Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And this short screencast will be on Float. Float helps you put content side by side. For example, I've got an image here and then some warm Ipsum placeholder text. Let's say I want that text to wrap and start up here on the other side of the image. Well, because the lorem ipsum text is a P element, it's going to start on its own block. So float helps you use the white space created by the new block and allows the content to fill that space. By the way, this lorem ipsum text is simply placeholder text and you use it when you don't have content yet from your client to fill that gap. It's oftentimes used to show layout so that we can focus on the layout instead of focusing on what the words say. You can get lorem ipsum text from lipsum.com and you can generate as much lorem ipsum placeholder text as necessary back to the web page. To get a paragraph to fill the space caused by an image, you simply go to your style sheet and enter this rule. On the image element, we want to float it. In this case, I'll float it left. By floating it left, saving and refreshing the page, the paragraph fills that empty space. There are a couple important things to note here. That paragraph is still a block element, even though it looks like you've made it inline. And the width of the block still goes from the outer edges of the body. In this web page, I do not have the outer wrapper div that I was using earlier. So the content is going from one edge of the body to the other. So to prove this, I'm going to go to my style sheet and use my go-to rule, which is to see my blocks, which is P. In this case, I'm, my block is a P element. And add the border rule, border, one pixel, red, solid. This will help me see my paragraph, see where the block actually is. Refresh. And you can see that the border of this block actually is hidden, and that's because it's going behind this image. So even though the text has moved to the empty space caused by floating this image, the block itself is still within the container element, which is the body, which is the entire width of the browser. So your next problem might be, well, how do I put a little space between my text and my image? Well, knowing that this block goes clear behind the image, side to side of this, from the left edge of the body to the right edge of the body, you know that any padding that you add to this block will not affect this gap because the padding will be on the left, on the top, on the right, and the bottom. And let's do that just to prove it. So your first effort at moving that text away from the image might be to add some padding. I'll add some 2% padding. Save and refresh. And I indeed did get padding on the top, right, bottom, and left. But over here on the left, it doesn't matter because it's behind the picture. So how do I address this edge of the image? Well, the only way to address this side of the image is to address the image tag itself. I need to put padding or margin on the right side of that image. And I'll do that. Let's add some margin on the right side only of the image of 2%. Save, refresh. And that's the way to add a little padding between an image and the paragraph that floats to the right of it. Again, it's enormously easier to see that the block goes clear across the screen and behind the image when I have these red borders turned on. Of course, you're going to turn off the red borders in the end, but for development purposes, it definitely helps me see my blocks. Now, let's do something a little bit different. Instead of floating this image left, let's float it right. The key thing I want you to notice when I float the image right is that I'm not changing my HTML at all. The image is still the first thing in the web page. All I'm going to do is change my CSS from float left to float right. Save, refresh, and now the image is floated right. I see that right margin of 2% on the image 
uh, I've got a little bit of issue here. I'd like to add a little bit more space on the left. But my main point that I want you to see is the image is still the first thing in the HTML. My image is still before any of my lorem ipsum text. So floating it right is a little bit more difficult to see because we read from left to right. We don't read from right to left in English anyway. So the order of the elements in the HTML did not change when I floated this right. I'm going to go to my style sheet and I'm going to put a margin of both left and right. Here we go top, right, bottom, left. I'm going to put a 2% margin on both the left and the right just so that we can add a little bit of space here. And also, this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the box for our block content goes from side to side of the containing element. In this case, the containing element is the body, regardless of whether it's wrapping or floating around an image that's been floated. Now, here's a really common thing. A really common thing is to have two different images on a page. So I'm going to uncomment my second image, save my page, and refresh it. Now, because I've got both images floated left, where do you think the second image, it's dogs2, is going to appear on the web page? Let's refresh and find out. The first image is floated right, then the second image is floated right, and then any content beyond that continues to be floated in the empty space. What if, however, I wanted to float this image left and this image right? Well, then I'd need something like this. I'd need an ID in here so that I could uniquely find each image. Let's float the first image. I'll ID it as image right. And the second image, I'm going to ID as image left. So that means my first image is going to be floated right my second image, I'm going to float left. Now you can use any name you want for your IDs in your classes, as long as it's within the naming conventions. You want those IDs and classes to be meaningful. Let's code this in our CSS and see what we've got. So instead of floating the whole image right, I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to go down below my images and code my IDs. Pound IMG right. I know people call that a hashtag, but I'm old, so I still call it the pound sign. And we're going to float right. So pound sign image right. Pound sign image left. Let's float. Let's add a rule for float left. So let's look at the code again. The first doggies are going to be floated right. The second doggies are going to be floated left. And let's refresh our page. And this is a very common organization for a web page because you might have an image on the, the right, an image on the left. And the thing I really want you to focus in on is the order of the HTML. The order of the HTML is the first image is floated, the second image is floated, and then the lorem ipsum text takes up the rest of the space. If I wanted to switch the way these doggies were uh, organized on the page, these pictures were organized on the page, I could simply change their IDs so that the first one, the first image, which is this one, is floated left. That's a little bit more sensical in my brain. So that the first image is floated left, the second image is floated right, and then the rest of the content takes up the space, the remaining space. Now there's one more thing I want to show you, and that is sometimes you want to stop the float. I'm going to make this paragraph a lot smaller by just this first paragraph, a lot smaller by just deleting some text. I'm going to save this and refresh it. Let's see, I need to delete a little bit more. Let's delete all this. Okay, so let's say my situation is I want to allow the first paragraph to float, but this paragraph that starts with MAC and that starts with this word that, that starts with this word, I want it to clear the float. In other words, I don't want that paragraph to float up into any remaining space. That's very common. We very commonly do that with the footer because rarely do we want the footer information to float up if there's extra space. Usually we want that footer to be a block by itself at the bottom of the page and never float up. So to stop the float, you need to put something into the P uh, an ID or a class that you can talk to with the CSS 
let's see, let's class this with the class clear float. This is something descriptive. Save our HTML, go to our CSS, and on the clear float class, period or dot, as they say now, clear float, the rule is clear float. You can clear only the left float or only the right float, which would be clear left or clear right. But since we have both types of float prior to this paragraph, I'm going to say clear both to make sure I catch both the right and the left float. So usually we write clear both just in case we have both the left and the right float uh, prior to that particular paragraph. <clears throat> okay, save, refresh, and now that float has been cleared. If I wanted to, and now that paragraph starts on its own block instead of using this extra space that's created by the float. Thank you.